So in continuing with our first proving ground, this is where we left off. Remember, you can always go to unit six and just work your way through it. Look at past examples. But there are three things we need to do. The first is we need to put a creature into an environment and make it the anatomy match in terms of the angle of the anatomy. So if they're standing on something, it needs to look like that's believable, right? If they're flying, they might be casting a shadow on something and their angle needs to make sense with the, the, the lens or the angle of the environment. So we're matching the angle of the anatomy and the lighting. And atmosphere really helps, right? The second thing we have to do is we have to recognize what the physical dimensions are of what I call a creature scape and then what pixel resolution that is. And your creature needs to take up at least 25% of the image space. So this is about as small as your creature could be within your image. I'll say 20 to 25%. But you can also crop down to where your creature is in your landscape. So I'll talk about that. And then the third thing is you need to write this little description of how your creature lives in and, it, and interacts with your environment. These are to meet all the criteria of the proving ground. No matter how strange your environment is, no matter how strange your creature, you can do these things. And if you messed up the resolution on either your creature or on your environment, it's fine to downsample it and make it screen resolution, just as long as you note that. Screen resolution is 72 pixels per inch. Standard print resolution is 300 pixels per inch. And in order for something to be big enough, quote unquote big enough, it needs to be at least 8 by 10 inches at that resolution. Some other examples. All right. So, <coughs> it should remind you of things like Space Jam. How do they make animated content fit into photographic content? They do it by matching the angle of the anatomy and the lighting direction. So we're going to be able to do that with our creature. So if your creature looks really flat, we need to add highlights and shadows to it to match your environment. And we do that with dodge and burn. And those are the three criteria. You need to get full points on all three of them in order to qualify for this part of the creative problem solving batch. But in total, it's only 1.5 points of the total 100 for the class. So it's pretty low stakes, but it gives us a chance. All right, so with my surreal desert, and what did I call this guy? A desert scum hopper. This is my creature scape. It will use a landscape, but it will put my creature into it. How do I create this? And you only need to post the one image, right? We talked about texture fills and tablets help and the case is open back there. So by erasing away from my foreground here, I can really showcase this creature kind of flying on this background plate. And then I can play just with the general opacity. But I like the warmth that this texture fill is kind of giving it. And I can also play with hue saturation on the texture fill. as It helps if I've rasterized it. And I can change the hue. Now, because this texture fill came in from Pixabay and it was already kind of a warm yellowish color, I can turn it purplish, bluish, whatever I want. And then I can actually saturate it more or less. So I might saturate it a little bit and then shift its hue. You can actually see it change in the preview too, a little bit orangier, even to red. Find what I want. I can even just lighten it or darken it. See what that does to help. And because I have a lightened blending mode on it, the more I darken it, the less of it will show. Kind of revealing that night sky. All right, now the one underneath that 
I can play with in a few ways. I have it also on Lighten, and I have it at 41%. I can build that up stronger, but because this is grayscale, if I want to change the color, I do the same thing, image adjustment, hue saturation, but changing the hue won't do anything if it's grayscale. So what do I need to do? I need to click on colorize. So to force color into something that doesn't have color, you say colorize, and then you're able to set a hue and a saturation for that thing. And it will be monochrome. It will all be that one color, but you can make it as intense as you want and any color that you want on the spectrum. So I'm going to make it more like dust clouds from this desert. Right. And then I'm going to soften it even more. And to really have full control of it, I'm going to rasterize it. I don't need to keep it as a smart object. That requires more memory. And now I'm going to take that opacity down. And that really helps it look like my creature is flying in the foreground. Even though these textures are on top of it, because I've erased a lot out, that, that creature is clearly foreground and this is clearly background. Now what if I wanted to push my creature back further? All I have to do is layer them back. Now they're behind that foreground tree. Now they're deeper into that atmosphere. And I like that. Now they're like planet sized, <laughs> you know, in the far background, peeking behind a mountain. Okay, what I actually like is this depth. Yeah, I like that depth a lot. But I can also play with dodging and burning it. And this is not my assignment one. I've resaved this as my proving ground one. So I can actually get rid of this tree. There's no reason that needs to be there. And let's see, there's a few ways I could do this. I can also, let's get rid of that rock. Or at least put the tail in front of the rock. So it gets you to really pay attention to your different assets, right? So I want that rock to be behind the tail. So I just move that down. There we go. So now I've got my creature and it looks pretty good just using the, the texture fills, but I haven't done anything to change my creature. Yeah. So now I'm going to show you how to do what's called non-destructive editing. This is from photography. It's very, very helpful here because you have assets that you like. So what are the basic assets I have? I have the background. I have my creature. So I'm going to actually merge a lot of these. So I'm going to take all my background layers from my creature on back. And I have my creature in a few different places that I've played with, right? And so you can kind of pick the positioning. These are all just smart objects of my creature. I haven't rasterized it yet. But let's say I really like this one. So how can I meet that requirement that it's at least 25% of the image? Because this isn't too clear, right? It shouldn't be, like I say, it shouldn't be like, where's Waldo for your creature? You shouldn't have to really search for it. So what you would do is use your guides to frame a composition that you like where the creature is big enough in it, like that. And then you would crop down to that composition with the cropping tool. So I'm going to save this as one option. 
So I'm going to say file, save a copy. And I'll just save this as a JPEG. And I'll say option one. Small creature. Because though this works great for the assignment, I need to be aware of what its actual size is. It's physical dimensions. It's four by six inches by 350. So that's not big enough. Well, let's see what it is at um, 300. Yeah, so five by seven at 300, that's standard print resolution. That's not eight by 10 or bigger. So this can no longer be print resolution. So then I have to check what it is at screen resolution, and then it's 30 inches by 22 inches at 72 pixels per inch. Okay, so that's one option. Now let's go back to before I cropped it, right? And before I turned off my other layers. And now let's make this option. So how do I, how do I edit this in a way that doesn't hurt the the assets so the first thing i'm going to do is anything that's underneath the the smart layer that i'm using that's just like a background i'm going to select it all and flatten it so layer merge layers command e or i can just hit command e so now all of that is on one background everything else is either in front of my creature which this element is, which doesn't really need to be. I can actually push that behind and then merge that into the landscape too. So now all of that is on one layer. That's my background plate. I have my creature, and then I have all my texture fills, four of them on top. Right? And I'm realizing that this top one I can lighten a lot more, and that's still pretty effective. So it's good to have all of these to kind of play with. Okay, so now, why don't I merge all of these, these texture fills? First, I'm going to save it. That's going to save me a lot of memory. Well, if I select all of my texture fill layers, which are on different blending modes, and I merge them, Command-E, they're going to look different. And that's because you can only set one blending mode per layer. So if you want to have different opacities of different blending modes like I had, you need to keep them as individual layers. When I save it as a PNG or as a JPEG, it will look the way it should. It will all flatten together. But if I merge just those layers, it will still, it will have to pick one opacity, one blending mode. And that opacity will be 100% and that blending mode will be normal, <laughs> which isn't always going to give me the same effects. All right. So now, how do I change the lighting direction? How do I dodge and burn? This is something I really like. So the first thing is, I'm going to dodge and burn the setting. Let's say I need to put a shadow underneath my creature. So I'm going to go to my setting layer, and you can even label these layers. So that's my setting. I'm going to lock it so I can't hurt it. And I'm going to make a new blank layer on top of that. And this is called a non-destructive overlay layer. Remember we talked about texture overlays. Now we're going to create our own overlay. Why is it non-destructive? Just like the way we use clone stamp, we're going to do it on a new layer that doesn't affect any pixels directly. It will only affect what's underneath it. So a non-destructive overlay layer. I'm going to mark that layer with a color that is gray because the only way this works is if I fill this layer with exact middle gray. So I say edit, fill, 50% gray, normal, 100% opacity. That's what I get. What do you see right now? You see my creature on top of middle gray with all these texture overlays on top of that. And you can see how they affect the gray. I'm going to turn all those texture overlays off for the moment. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the blending mode of this non-destructive overlay layer to overlay. And what that does is make it completely invisible. Because what overlay does is it th sees things and blends them in that are lighter than 50% gray, and it sees things and blends them in that are darker than 50% gray. 
but it doesn't do anything.